Good morning and welcome to Coffee Conversations from Roofers Coffee Shop. My name is Heidi Ellsworth and today we are here to talk about Rivet and BIM. I tell you what, these are this is a topic that I have been in, just loved my whole career. Talking to architects, talking to all the technical, Autodesk, you name it. And so Hunter Panels has brought the experts from Hunter Panels and also from Autodesk to talk to us about this great topic today. So Megan, we're going to go ahead and start going through those slides. So thank you, Hunter Panels, so much for being our sponsor today. This is an amazing topic. Um, housekeeping wise, as you all know, this will be available on demand within 24 hours. So be sure to share that with all of your friends and all of your um, roofing professionals out there. This is an important topic to help grow your business. Um, also, the chat is open. So be sure to uh, let us know. I saw Brian already come in. Good morning, Brian. Please let us know where you're um, located, what type of business you have. We'd love to know commercial, residential, manufacturing, um, and be sure to make comments and ask questions all the way through this coffee conversations. So let's get started with our esteemed panel. First of all, I would like to welcome Luke Gower. Luke, welcome to Coffee Conversations. Good morning, Heidi. How are you doing this morning? I am doing great. If you could introduce yourself and also tell us a little bit about Hunter Panels and what you do there, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, my name is Luke Gower. I'm the technical and taper design manager here at Hunter Panels, um, where you know our job here is really to take the mystery out of everything tapered polyiso insulation uh, with clear designs, um, accurate uh, quoting, and uh, architectural assistance, and things just like this, presentations, and just knowledge, getting knowledge out into the industry about tapered polyiso insulation. Excellent. That is great. Welcome to the show. We are so happy to have you on here. And I would also love from Hunter Panels to introduce Heather. Heather, if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Hunter Panels, that would be great too. Yeah, sure. Um, so I am the CAD specialist here at Hunter Panels, which allows me to sort of dip my toes into a bunch of different aspects of the business, um, which I've really enjoyed my entire time here. Um, so uh, as we're about to talk about some of the programs that, again, that we're about to talk about are near and dear to my heart, and um, I can't wait to share it with you. Heather, thank you so much for being here. I love the fact that you are a CAD technician and that you're leading that um, de technical department. That um, That is so cool. So thank you so much for being here today. Um, and Last but certainly not least, I am so excited to introduce Matt Wunsch from Autodesk. Matt, welcome to Coffee Conversations. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. So uh, I'm a solutions engineer here at Autodesk, uh, but I have been in the AEC industry, both the horizontal and the vertical spaces since 1992, uh, back when the little save icon on all of our applications was an actual physical object. I don't know if that's just dating myself or not, but um, that was R10 DOS for AutoCAD. So I've yeah, been in the industry for longer than I'd like to admit, but uh, 30 some odd years. That is, um, I'd love to have you. And Megan, if we could um, progress that slide, everybody can see Matt on there. That would be great. Um, so folks, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for those great introductions. We're very excited about this. And I really kind of want to start out with the basics, because I think there's a lot of people who would just like to understand. So Matt, would you mind talking about what is BIM technology and how does Revit play within it? Yeah, absolutely. So I like to use it as both a noun and a verb, right? So <laughs> BIM is building information modeling uh, as as a verb, or it could be a building information model, like a, like a noun, right? So I, I tend to use it interchangeably all the time, but essentially, you know, BIM allows multiple disciplines to uh, produce a digital representation of an asset across its life cycle. So from planning and design to construction operations all the way through. Revit is that solution that, that helps pull all of these teams and stakeholders together, uh, allowing them to see that, that project coming to life digitally in the cloud, regardless of wherever they are in the world. And unlike 2D CAD, where only a single person can work on the drawing at any given time, 
the entire design team can hop into a Revit model, work on the same area at the same time. Um, we were kind of chatting a little bit before everyone came on, but you know, I, I believe the days of BIM and or I believe the days of charging extra for BIM as a service are long gone, right? It's no longer a nice to have option. It's really to be expected, just like walking into a Starbucks and hopping on their Wi-Fi is to be expected or being at a sports stadium or at a hotel room, like which is where <laughs> I am right now, being able to, to hop on that Wi-Fi, right? It's, it's no longer that nice to have, but really a need to have. Um, yeah, you know, we all live in a 3D world, so why shouldn't we be why shouldn't we be designing and modeling in 3D as well? That is so true. Um, and so okay, we want to kind of now that we ha have know where we're at and we know what that is, we want to also um, and sorry, I've had a little technical difficulty here. Hold on, there we go. Um. We also want to kind of talk about overall where it is in the industry, kind of to your point, Matt, of it's a given, but there was a recent Autodesk survey that showed the use of Revit and BIM with architects and the industry overall. Can you share some of that with us? But yeah, I mean that, you know, seeing those trends, I believe this is from the Dodge report, right? From uh, mm -hmm. 2021, I think it was. Um, but yeah, the, those trends are just constantly going, right? People are realizing that it's no longer that nice to have. It, it's a must have for, for projects and really ensuring that, uh, you know, everything can actually be built the way it's being designed, which is kind of a challenge when it comes to the, the 2D drawings, right? The, you get, you have to draw everything separately. You got your plans, you got your sections, you got your details. They're all part of that project, but they're also all very disconnected at the same time. Whereas Revit is a central database essentially of information of that geometry and being able to take that model and slice and dice it any which way, being able to see you know, where things are, right? And, and we're just seeing that trend going upward as people are realizing the, the benefits of having that model um, you know, up front before everything you know, goes out to the field. And then they start to realize, I can't actually build this because it wasn't coordinated correctly, right? So having right. that model allows people to do that, um, which you know, ties into all sorts of other aspects of sustainability and not having to, uh, you know, rip something out, ship it back to the site, you know, rebuild it and all that. There's a whole slew of, of, of added benefits to, uh, to having that 3D model. I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that as we, as we progress here, but yeah, the, I mean, those trends are just going to continue upwards as, as people really latch onto this. And Luke, as you're looking at the um, Dodge report, you were the one, you know, you, you guys track this a lot because because it really affects everything in the construction industry. What are some of your insights on the on um, this re most recent report? Yeah, just just kind of piggybacking off of what Matt just said. Um, you know, we we've struggled as an industry to move from 2D to 3D. Um, we've been we've been dealing with you know drawing roof plans in, in two dimensions and then using CAD to draw you know roof plans in two dimensions and we've always you know as as a hunter panels team looked at innovation as a necessary um, in the industry and been for our company and our department so we're trying to push the envelope and these are the kind of things that we're looking at it's okay how can we take this 2D drawing make it 3D be able to look at that in multiple different angles, make sure that, you know, like had Matt had just said that there's no um, issues between the different trades on the job sites. Um, and, you know, looking at this report when we got it in 21, um, it just really solidified, you know, the idea that we were headed in the right direction, that the innovation and the, and moving from 2d to 3d was the right move. Um, I think there's a couple of, of uh, you know, um, graphs in that report, the Dodge Dodge report that show, you know, architects that use 50% uh, BIM on 50% or more of their jobs are moving from, you know, the, the 40s into the 60s and 70s or 80s and 90s. And same with construction. Construction is going the exact same way. So contractors are using it on more and more of their projects. Um, again, in the, you know, in the next couple of years, and that's actually right now, because this report came out in 21, they're looking at you know, 60 to 70% of all contractors um, utilizing Revit in some capacity um, on their larger projects. 
Yeah. So well, when you when you see the construction companies up there, um, under the types of companies, construction company, and then also the users, construction professionals are second. I mean, I realize that's GCs, that's all the trades, but for roofing, that just really shows how important it is. Absolutely. And that and that's why we're, you know, that's why we're here today, right? Is we want to we want to get the message out and really highlight um the fact that this is where the industry is going. And we want to be on the front of that curve and we want everyone else to be on that curve as well and, and come along, uh, come along for the ride. Yeah, exactly. So, and Megan, I'm not sure if there, I think there's, and as everyone can tell, I don't have control of it today, but yes, I thought there was a next slide here too. So let's, um, so when, as you're looking at this, um, Luke and Heather too, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the top internal benefits for improving ROI, ROI on BIM and also that expectation and satisfaction with BIM skills of each company type. Ta um, Luke, let's start with you. Kind of, can you address some of this? Well, I mean, you know, just taking a look at this uh, when we read through it, you know, there's, there's a huge amount of uh you know positives that you can gain from moving into um utilizing bim and utilizing you know a software like revit um some of those could be you know the productivity of the internal folks you, you, the productivity of you know not as much rework i mean this is more heather's world so to speak because she's she's living in it every day and, and but as a designer um you know working with uh, a, a contractor or an architect or consultant going back and forth um, you know, having multiple conversations, multiple revisions to drawings uh, and the like, um, you know, this, you know, BIM and being able to work collaboratively like this um, really increases our productivity overall. And Heather, maybe you can talk a little bit to this too, because it's I I find the expectations of and satisfaction with graph so interesting because you can see architects, structural engineers, they're pretty much, you know, they've They've been using this, especially trades. So it's, you know, at that 50% there, I mean, there's, they're, they're on and they're definitely starting to gain. What are you seeing? Yeah. Um, so having sort of rolled out this new, I guess, uh, CAD program, which is Revit to our own folks internally has really given me an insight into probably the industry at large. Um, you, there's definitely people who are, more comfortable with um, legacy programs, things they are have been working with for years. And I think there's a good deal of hesitation to sort of dive into a new program um, because, I don't know, I think you feel like if you don't know every part of it, then you don't know the program and you can't make that claim anywhere. So um, we've, we've sort of, uh, I guess, supported that um, as far as as our internal people go and the people who have really uh, glommed onto it, that's not really the right word, but um, yeah. have really benefited from learning these things. Um, and I think that's probably why you see some of those columns uh, being shorter in some of those fields, because it's just, you know, we're still in that transitionary period where people are starting to use it. People are starting to be comfortable with using it, even if it's only a little fraction of it. I mean, what we have done is really just a tiny fraction of what Revit can do. Um, so I would just urge everyone to, to not be afraid of sort of, you know, embracing any part of Revit that works for you. Right. Well, and you, you're the leader in this. In fact, I think you're the only ones using Revit, right? For the most part out there. We've got a few of our, of our folks in the department who are coming up after me to sort of, yeah. you know, Bring it all. <laughs> I love it. So Megan, I believe we have another slide. Um, yeah. So now we are really kind of going to get into um, talking more about that. And so before we dive into exactly what, um, how it's working with the tapered systems, I do want to talk a little bit first. And um, Heather, I'm going to start with you on what type of contractor should be looking at Revit and who are you working with in the industry? Um, so this was a great question for us when we first started as well. It's like, who who's going to be interested in working with us on this? And um, we've sort of grown our, our list of contacts that are are that know that we're using Revit and use Revit themselves, um, which has been really wonderful. But, you know, we're still sort of on the the getting things 
together stage. So we're more than willing to work with anyone on at any level of, you know, Revit experience for that matter. Um, so uh, we've definitely just uh, seen that this makes a difference in um, contractors who are bidding projects, um, especially if they can show this as a, sort of a final visual to the client. It makes it much easier to understand. And as we'll get into in a bit, um, tapered insulation on a roof is probably one of the hardest things to sort of visualize in three dimensions, um, but it's it's vital to how it works. So this was sort of an ideal uh, forum in which to try this out. And it's really been great for um, architects as well. Again, anyone who works with Revit already to have to be able to work within the same um, the same file and basically incorporate our designs into their plan set has been really wonderful. And I think for, for both of us, it's been a benefit um, as far as uh, making connections go. Uh, what else? What other contractors? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, just to, you know, to further that that uh, train of thought, um, you know, the larger contractors that are working with high profile projects and high profile architects, they're the ones that are already, for the most part, going to be utilizing Revit some capacity and collaborating with those architects. We've seen um, we've seen quite a bit of uh, usage on, you know, the smaller contractors or where we've had a difficult situation on the roof, um, but they've come up to a, an area where they don't know exactly how the drainage is supposed to work. And we're able to go in there, show them a 3D model of how the how that water is going to efficiently get to the drainage points, um, show that there's going to be positive drainage in the Cricket Valley slope, et cetera, those kind of things, um, and really makes their life a lot easier um, when they're on the roof and they can actually see in three dimensions how that's going to work. So. I think it's great for larger contractors and larger um, general contractors, but it's also useful for for smaller contractors that just are in are in a bind and want to see something, um, you know, in three dimensions. Or those those up and coming contractors that that you know uh, might be a little bit younger on the spectrum that that come into the business. Um, you know, contracting and and roofing is a is kind of a, an older generation, um, but we're starting to see that influx of of younger folks come in that really embrace technology and and. You know, again, that's that's where we want to be on that cutting edge. Yeah. And I I love um, I first I have to admit, say, Stan, good morning. I love your comments because as we were talking about, you know, um, just this is part of the new age of technology. He said, like Google Docs and then also thinking 3D is imperative when designing a tapered system for a roof. Um, it comes second nature to roofers to understand the water flow. Um, I stand right on. And I, I think, you know, this is going to seem really elementary, but I'm going to, I'm just going to bring it up for those folks who may be listening to this in the future and who maybe are new to the industry or anything, but really what we're talking about too, as we're talking about the Revit and the BIM, and it is a majority low slope, but I'm going to ask the question. Can this be used on steep slope because it's just the whole building? And how much are you seeing that? I mean, I know not with the tapered system, but overall, let's talk a little bit between low slope, steep slope, and the BIM capabilities. Uh, maybe, Matt, you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be, honestly, it could be used for anything, really. It's, you know, whatever you can dream up, Revit can most likely handle it. You know, it, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, really flat, really 90 degree walls, things like that. Uh, it, it's really up to, to you and, and the limit of your imagination. Uh, but I, I wanna go back to, to something Heather said earlier and it she mentioned working with directors, with architects, right? I think that's really important here because the folks at Hunter Panels, they know their systems, they know how they're supposed to operate, how they're supposed to be built, you know, taking into, into account the, the slope, for example, right? If you give that to an architect, they might get it right eventually. Um, but, you know, Revit allows for the architect, the structural engineer, Hunter Panels, everybody to be in that model at the same time, working on and, and focusing on what they're good at, what they know inside and out, right? So um, you just working with those those other partners early on is 
I think very critical to, to having a successful project rather than coming in late in the game uh, and then trying to trying to you know, fix something that wasn't quite designed in accordance to the specifications or you know, with the right slopes, for example. So partnering with with those team team members on early is going to be extremely beneficial to the, the success of the project. Well, and I also, um, I think that's perfect because um, Heather also said something about, or, and maybe Luke, it was you, I'm not sure, but um, that when you are presenting your proposals to a building owner, to a general contractor, to, you know, working with architects, however that may be, that is really key in, um, thank you, Megan, um, that is really key in um, being able to differentiate your business. So if you are, if you have your own um, department with your own AutoCAD or Rivet um, designers, that shows obviously the scale that you're at. But even as a smaller contractor, to your point, if they work with someone like you, like Hunter or their manufacturers to provide these kind of plans that we're seeing right here, that makes a huge difference in the sales process. And Heather, you're nodding. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, um, I, I, again, I think the, the biggest benefit of all of this is that ease of communication and really sort of translating what you're planning on doing into visual information that anyone, like a layman, can understand, which is, you know, most of us at the end of the day here. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I, I can't say enough for for the for the collaboration part of this. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Luke. Oh no, I, I yeah, I completely agree that Matt Matt was Matt was spot on, you know, working directly with an architect. I mean, you know, architects have so much to learn through their schooling and then through, you know, throughout their their careers, they have so much to work on. The roofing aspect of it is kind of an afterthought. We've all seen the plans and this is this isn't saying anything disparaging about architects, like I said, they they need they know uh, you know, everything about the building. You know, the roofing is a little bit of an afterthought when it comes to that for, for a lot of them. And being able to partner with someone like Hunter Panels that can take their model and really put the tapered insulation into their model um, and collaborate with them directly, look at things like, um, and I, I will probably get to it later, but something like a clash detection, mechanical units, piping, that sort of thing on the roof and make sure that all these things work together um, yes. in the environment. And then having that as a uh, as a visual representation to the general contractor, to the building owner saying, this is exactly how your roof and your building as overall is going to look, just puts them a notch above everybody else in the industry. Yeah, you know, I, I really see it as speaking the same language that, you know, the contractor now before maybe the architect, the GC, the other, we're all talking the same language and the roofing contractor may have been left out. Now all of a sudden using Rivet and BIM, you are now talking the same language. Everybody's seeing the same thing. So let's go to the next slide and talk a little bit about that on um, 2D versus 3D models and how to kind of, you know, let's just kind of talk about when they're used, by who on the job prog process. So Megan, if you can switch the slide and um, thank you, Stan. Most architects I have worked with don't want to be the designer when it comes to tapers. And I also don't feel they see the ultimate importance of proper slope. So this is how you talk. This is how you communicate. Thank you, Stan. Please everybody continue questions, comments. This is perfect. Um, so Megan, if we could switch to the next slide, please. Perfect. So let's um, start with you, Luke, and just talking about the difference between the 2D and the 3D models and where they're used and when. What's what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, the slide you have up here is, is more of a, you know, a mechanical type situation. But if I just look at it, you know, through my through the roofing lens, through tapered systems lens, we've always done things in two dimensions. Right. And And that's great. And it's been great. And it's worked. Um, but as we look at three dimensions, we really come to realize as we've, you know, integrated using Revit in our designs, um, there's a lot of holes that, and a lot of issues that crop up when you're only dealing with two dimensions, right? You can lay out a tapered design um, to efficiently move the water off the drain, yet when you really look at that in three dimensions, 
sometimes the slopes don't don't interact correctly or sometimes the slope is pushing against a penthouse or uh, another obstruction on the roof and you don't really see that in two dimensions as much as you would in three dimensions once you start taking that putting it in a three dimension start to rotate that you really see that there's there's some issues with the slopes going on that you know, uh, uh, contractors are going to look at that drawing that you provide them, that 2D drawing that you provide them, and they're going to lay it out according to that drawing as best they can. And sometimes, you know, that that runs into some issues. So um, as I see it, uh, moving from 2D to 3D really accentuates um, those points of uh, of error, you know, that you can have on a roof. Yeah, you cannot model in 3d an impossible yeah. roof but you can absolutely do it in 2d so yeah 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 so, so megan let's go, uh, go on to the next slide and along to that point um you know we're talking about the need to you know again why how does this help where does it help i'm um, kind of setting that stage so when you're looking at um how 3d modeling to your point heather can um improve your win rates on projects this is really interesting so luke why don't we start with you on this dodge report again and kind of walk us through some of these results on really how it's helping people yeah so i mean one that really jumped out to me when we when we looked at this was you know improved win rate which is at the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now um and this question is really for for uh you know contractors um you know that are using bim medium to high levels right so if you look at this 80 uh, oh sorry 78% of those contractors are using it medium to high and are seeing a very a big benefit on improving their win rate on jobs just by using BIM. So um, really jumped out to me, uh, improved quality design, client satisfaction, all these things are, are huge um, to, to, you know, that win rate and, and, you know, providing a service to the building owner, to the client, to, you know, to the end, end user of that. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt, as you're talking, I mean, you talk to so many people who obviously are using Autodesk and using all of these products. What do you hear back from more specialty trade construction, um, specifically roofing, if you can, but on how this how this has helped them by bringing this into their business? Yeah, I mean, it, I think this slide pretty much pretty much nails it all, right? So, uh, and I think Heather mentioned you know reducing errors and rework earlier, right? So. You know, when we're looking at that entire 3D model and, you know, you modify the roof, for example, that's automatically going to adjust the, the schedule of, of, of materials and quantities, uh, area calculations, like all these things are just tied together. So you don't have to manually go through your, your separate files and maybe Excel sheets and things like that and transfer, you know, copy, paste, whatever uh, to get from one, one file to another data stream it, it's all just interconnected inside of that single revit revit model um so you know it's it, I, like i said i think this slide really just kind of nails on all those really you know key benefits there i, I would add uh you know sustainability to that because you know that's a, a huge huge topic of conversation these days as well and you know i mentioned it earlier you know being able to to ensure that everything can be built the way it, it, it's you know, designed to be built and, and not have to, you know, redo some of that work out in the field, which, you know, results in, you know, possibly ripping stuff out, you know, cutting more materials, pulling it, you know, bringing it on site, everything related to it in terms of carbon emissions and, and everything else there. So, uh, you know, I, I would add that. I'm actually kind of surprised that's not on this list here, but um, that's huge as well. And, you know, for, for those of you who are still kind of on the fence with, with 2D and going to 3D, keep in mind that, that the 2D, if you need it, is really just a byproduct of that 3D model, right? So if you need to push that file out to, to 2D for someone who's still, still working in CAD, you do have that ability. Uh, you know, obviously, it's not going to be fully three-dimensional, parametric, et cetera, but you know, again, it's it's a byproduct of that 3D model. Just however you slice and dice it horizontally, vertically, whatever, um, you can get that that particular view and then set it off 
that person who's still, you know, working in the stone age with their, their, their rock and chisel and whatnot. Um, but, you know, hopefully that kind of helps you know, encourage them to, to move into the 3D world as well. Yeah. Well, I, I like the fact, I, I think that's a great point, Matt, is that by making this move to 3D, you're able to still work and function in all worlds. And because sometimes, exactly. you know, it's like yeah. you get the new phone and you're like, I can never go back to my flip phone, but um, <laughs> this allows you a little yeah. bit. <laughs> um, so, okay. As we're, as we're ta talking about this and I do want to let everybody know, um, first of all, I wanted to read Cassie. Thank you. You made a really great comment earlier, thanking us for this. So thank you. Um, but you said sometimes it's the case that architects don't always know the best way to get positive drainage. So tapered designers are able to help create the best drainage and proposals for such. Perfect, perfect comment. It leads us right into the importance of communications on the job site and how this facilitates that. And so we have a new slide here, um, you know, really kind of talking about the different um, activities by company type and activities by BIM usage, how that's the communication. Um, so let's start with Heather, kind of you, brought this up earlier, but really how does this technology facilitate that communication and help educate all parties, help educate those architects on the importance of drainage? Yes. Uh, so one thing I wanted to sort of uh, emphasize was something Matt said, which is that uh, Revit is a parametric program. So not only do you input data and create things, but you can actually extract data as they're um, you know, subjected to various things, whatever you're looking at, analysis, we'll call it. Um, so it's, I don't know if any of you have heard of digital twins. It's sort of a, a rising field within construction and building um, maintenance and things like that. So uh, at the root of that is a 3D model often made in in Revit. And so that, as, as we've been saying, you know, it's going to have everybody literally on the same page looking at the same data, and it's going to be accurate, at least to as far as you put it in correctly. Um, so it's, it's sort of a baseline that everyone can refer back to at any given point, regardless of, of what, what field you are consulting in, for example. Um, and so uh, I've noticed personally, um, that the designers, the tapered designers who have embraced Revit really have a much more innate or under, you know, true understanding of what they're modeling. So like they really get the three-dimensional um, thing in their brain as they're doing it. And it really helps to sort of understand the whole process in general. So um, I, I think, again, having everyone on the same page given the same data and being able to, you know, extract data that you didn't necessarily know when you made the model is also really important. So like, you know, if, if we often get little problems, you know, problems in a certain building, maybe there's a height restriction or um, just a weird arrangement of things. Um, it's much easier to sort of try it out ahead of time. And, and you can put multiple options on the table and and look at all of them. And um, it's, it's, you know, it really does help everyone communicate within the project. Because before this, it was, as Matt said, you know, a million people basically touching it at various places, trying to put their things back to the, the master, you know, file and everything. <laughs> and um, that's, that's, Every one of those is a is a place where you can make a little mistake, which can turn into a big mistake down the line. So, right, and you know what, I am going to um, circle back around because we always like to be on the forefront. So, for those people who may not know, including myself, what are digital twins? Do you want to do this, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> I, it, honestly, th there's so many different definitions out there. It. it I think it really kind of comes down to what your particular need is for a project, but uh, essentially a digital twin is a, you know, of a full digital representation of a built asset. So, you know, let's take a, you know, a factory and it's got the roof and, you know, that factory could have IOT sensors in there, could have, uh, you know, rain gauges that are, that are being monitored, monitored and, you know, being able to tap into that information at any given time, from you know just just your phone right so wow um, 
you know, being able to, to get that insight into that, that digital twin um, is, is huge, right? Especially when it comes to, you know, maintenance and predictive analytics and things like that. You know, when is this pump possibly going to fail? Because it was last main, you know, there, uh, the maintenance was done on it, you know, five, six years ago, right? So uh, having all that information in there is, is key. And I, I saw Cassie threw a, a question in the, in the chat there, and you know, is more information needed for the 3D model uh, than just a typical roof plan? Yeah, I would say absolutely, right? So, you know, looking at, you know, the, the roof plan, for example, you've got the, the various layers, various materials. What's the, the thermal resistance on this material? What color is it? How does that all play into the analysis of the building? Is that building going to perform the way it's intended, you know, designed to perform in the, the conditions where it's being built? Uh, you know, all of this extra information kind of seems, you know, might seem a little ridiculous to put, you know, all this information in there, but that information can be built into those object types from the get-go. So they're always available for every single project moving forward, right? So it's not something that you're going to be doing over and over and over again. You do it once and then you just use it throughout. Um, so yeah, absolutely throw in as much information as you can because you never know when you might need this particular piece of information for analysis or you know this for a report or, or whatever the case may be, right? So the more information you can put in there, the better. Better. I love it. And I love Brian, your comment, I'm um, kind of circling back around to, and really how this is tying everything together, whether, and I think contractors in, in listening to this and correct me if I'm wrong, but contractors really need to be aware of that. This is going to, you know, you're going to be using this technology in new construction, but it's being used all the way through the life cycle of the building now. And so that I love the comment from Brian, essentially tying into tandem, moving into the facility management side of the building life cycle. So I would think some contractors may think, well, I only do re-roof. It's not going to matter to me. It is going to matter to you. Um, it's These buildings are smart buildings and and it's being done in such a different way. And Heather, I love your nod. So, and is this what you're seeing out there? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the point that Matt brought up or the word, the word that's really important there is information, right? You can put all different types and, and flavors of information into that model uh, and then being able to be able to extract that. So, uh, you know, I'm just looking at this slide that we have up on the screen here and it's material managed by classification code, right? So, you know, you're baking in that information, whether it's, you know, a coated glass face material, what PSI um, insulation it is, uh, those sort of things, what membrane it is, uh, you know, what the vapor barrier is, you're putting all this information in there um, and that communication flows all the way through from the architectural process all the way to the contractor side of the business. And that way they're getting, they're making sure they're getting the right materials at the right time, um, exactly as they expect it to be. And there's not, uh, you know, going back to that sustainability. We're not, you know, transporting material back and forth to the job site, having overages or shortages of material. All that information is there and is readily accessible to utilize, uh, whether you're the architect, whether you're the contractor or the building owner in the life cycle of it, looking at, oh, when is this? Oh, my my roof was done, yeah. you know, 28 years ago. Well, I'm looking at my warranties coming up in, in a couple more years. And now we really need to start looking at those those things or whether it's an HVAC unit or whatever it is on, on the on the roof um, and then the building. That stuff is readily accessible to you through this, through the use of, of BIM. Yes. And I wanted just to add um, that as BIM sort of, well, as the industry progresses with BIM, some of these models are very rich with information. Um, they come, you know, with our value, with, with critical parameters that are important to builders, that are important to the specs, for example. Um, so as, as we continue to sort of um, increase our, our collective BIM library here in the, actually in the world, really, um, it's, it's going to allow really, people with that are not you know jacks of all trades so to speak um to have that expertise coming directly from the experts but basically just downloading it right into your project so um definitely another way of uh of yeah. advantage <laughs> it's it's really a it's 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 gonna really differentiate 
contractors who are using this and who are moving there to that next level. So um, Megan, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. I just want to make sure that where we are at and yes, this is exactly where I was hoping we were at because um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there right now who are um, just saying how, right? Okay. I get it. This is the future. We need to do it. This is everything. So how do we start um, incorporating this technology? So Luke, let's start with you just on how can um, roofing contractors start? Yeah. So, I mean, really it's, it's working with us and working with the architect um, that's utilizing, you know, BIM software already, you're already, already utilizing Revit. Um, but if you're not, um, you know, we can provide things for you such as on the screen here at the top left, you, you see it, like Matt had mentioned earlier, it's a 2D drawing, really, but it was created out of a 3D model, as you can see with the, you know, with the shadowing and et cetera on there. Um, gives you a much better idea of how that roof is going to get laid out, what, how that water is going to efficiently move to the, to the drainage points. Um, so working with us, getting these models, getting these really, you know, uh, if you're not utilizing Revit and you're not in that space already, you can still utilize, um, you know. Yeah, AutoCAD, anything like yeah. Matt was saying, you can export these into a yes. DWG file format. Um, so basically, we're going to try to meet you wherever you're at. Um, as I said before, there's a huge range of, of involvement from the various contractors. And, you know, maybe you don't do anything with 3D anything but we're still going to provide you with the visuals to, to show to your client, for example. Um, maybe you're just dabbling with, with, um, with Revit, um, in which case we can, you know, sort of have a back and forth about how best to incorporate our designs with yours. Um, and uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's, of course, we're up. You know, as as people get more comfortable with it, we're hoping to get more people who are already using it. But again, don't don't hesitate to reach out or make use of our services or Revit or BIM in general, just because you don't know everything about it. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about your services. And I think you know we talked about hundred panels, and um, but let's just talk a little bit about you know I think there's probably people out there thinking wow, I can come in here and you're going to help me with Revit um, to get my tapered system and to figure out my insulation. Um, talk a little bit about how those services work. Um, how do you know people reach out? They may be, let's be honest, they may be buying um, insulation other places or through some of their manufacturers. Um, how do they start connecting with you and doing that? Yeah, I mean, so you can go right onto our website. Um, you can go right onto our uh, roofing section on our website. Go into the tapered section. Has a request for request for a tapered quote right on there. But it can also be a design assist. So if you're looking at um, a roof and you're not exactly sure how that's going to be laid out with the tapered insulation system, we can do that for you. We can we can give you the design, um, and then you can decide if you want to go down that path. Get get a quote, get a piece count, get a bill of materials, and then ultimately purchase uh, that material from us and that design. Mm -hmm. um, but really, this is you know we we kick this uh, you know the use of Revit off, um, kind of starting with the architectural community, working with the architects, um, working with their Revit files, uh, you know, and then kind of transitioning that, saying okay, our deliverable to the customer to the contractor is going to be you know, what they're used to, that T 2D model, that 2D drawing, but also, hey, we're going to give you some three-dimensional, um, you know, snips to really show you how that's going to operate in real real space, um, you know, to give them, you know, kind of to whet their appetite, right. so to speak. And hopefully differentiate ourselves from the competition. Right. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So Matt, if um, there's contractors out there listening to this right now who have not done this at all, I mean, they, they do not have any of this, but they want to, they want to get Revit. They want to start working within this world and I'm um, having, so talk to um, a little bit, how, how do they start? How, what's yours? Not just like, you know, go and download it. I, I mean, but how, what are some of the advice that you would give on how they can start bringing this into their company and then having that department working directly with someone like Hunter to be able to switch, you know, send files back and forth to each other. Right. Yeah. So 
the advice I would provide, what I, what I would suggest is, you know, start slow, right? Don't try to go all in right away because that's, you know, honestly, it's only just going to lead to frustration and you just kind of throwing your hands up and saying, forget it, I'm done. Um, but, you know, start slow, you know, work with uh, either a, a, a partner reseller or there's a whole series of uh, uh, authorized uh, training centers, you know, get some basic training on Revit because it, it is different from AutoCAD, for example, it's, it's totally different uh, file format. It's like I mentioned earlier, it's like a database and everything is in that single file. Uh, so the workflows are a little bit different. Uh, but but just you know, start slow, right? Um, take take those baby steps and really kind of focus in on what's important to you. What you know in terms of your workflows, your your particular job, because uh, Revit can really do everything, right? It can do the architectural, the mechanical, the structural. Do you necessarily need training on all those other parts? Probably not, right? So really, just kind of focus in on what's what's important to you. Go slow. And, you know, it's been mentioned a number of times before, there is that ability to kind of bail out, if you will, and go to 2D DWGs to, to finish out that project, right? So throughout that, that learning curve, that, that time that it takes to get, you know, ramped up, um, you do have that, you know, sort of emergency eject, if you will. You can always go back and, and finish it out in AutoCAD where you're, you know, still very familiar. Um, but, you know, ultimate goal is to get to that 3D level, right? So being able to, to produce something like you see on the screen here. And then, you know, take it a step further, you know, take all that information, those models out to the field on your phone instead of lugging around a, a giant roll, you know, giant set of 36 by 48 sheets over your shoulder. Uh, you just take your tablet, take your phone out there and just kind of, you know, scroll through the, through the drawings, through the models and see everything right there. So we, we, we've all got one, right? So why not take advantage of, you know, this horsepower and, you know, save a few trees and not have to lug around all those sheets out there. So, but yeah, ultimate advice is you know, take it slow. Um, it, it's not going to be uh, you know, a, a quick change. It, it does take a different little bit of a mindset, um, but right. yeah, you know, work, work with work with partner uh, resellers and then you get to that point where you start working with hunter and, and you know you, you collaborate on those models together and let them do you know what's really you know what they really uh, specialize in and you can focus on the other parts of it and really just making sure that everything comes together the way it's supposed to well, and I'm going to ask some simple questions because I think there's probably some people, I, I, I'm guessing there's some people thinking the way I am too. And I, Brian was reading my mind, like established contractors would probably benefit from bringing in experienced talent. So simple question. If you already have Auto, Autodesk, then that's a step you can take to Rivet, right? From Autodesk and incorporating Revit. Is that correct, Matt? I'm I'm sorry. I was I was getting caught up reading the. Uh, I saw a Q and A come in. It's a yeah. pretty lengthy one. Can, can, can you oh. repeat the question? Oh, I need to get my Q and A. Okay, we'll bring that up. But just if you already have Autodesk, it's just one step up to going to on um, Revit, and you can already bring that in for the most part. But right. If, yeah. 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 But if you don't have Autodesk, I mean, maybe I'm getting confused here that with the terminologies. But just for a contractor, you know, if they go from 2D. And then they want to go to 3D, but can they just go, if they have nothing, just go directly to 3D if they bring in just hiring some experienced talent out there to Brian's point? Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there's always, always that option as well, right? Whether, uh, you know, whether you hire someone or you outsource some of that work as well, there's definitely, you know, that option. Yeah. Uh, and, and one thing I, I wanted to mention too is, you know, as you're getting into the Revit application, you can import those 2D DWGs and sort of use them as a background, a little bit of a reference to, you know, kind of, you know, start your design. Um, again, just, you know, in, in that, that that ramp up process, getting your feet wet, getting familiar and comfortable with the application. So there's, there's a lot of that bi-directionality between the 3D world and the 2D world. Um, 
Perfect. Okay. And you're right. We just had a and a Q&A come in and it is rather lengthy. And thank you. Um, they work for a manufacturer of roofing membranes. I'm not going to read this whole thing, um, but I think you have, Matt, right? Do you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get through it. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, I can simply offer BIM data of the products we manufacture along with their physical properties, hyperlinks to the product pages, et cetera, and leave the designer to assemble the roofing components themselves in BIM to meet their project's specific needs. Is my thinking correct? Yes, a hundred percent. Yes. So Luke, can you talk to that? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that we're looking at doing, um, you know, and, and are doing now and are going to be building upon that. And that's kind of what, you know, Matt had mentioned it earlier. We talked about it a little bit is that information that's in that model, just baking in all of the, the specs for that product, the hyperlink, all of the uh, material, physical properties, all those things are going to be baked right into uh, the model for you. So as you, Extract that data, gives you a rundown of all the information and all the materials that are on that job site or on that roof that make up that roofing component system. Um, and yeah, it's it's extremely powerful. And that's exactly the question. I believe if you, if I understood it correctly, is exactly what we want to do and what we can do and what BIM can do and so much more than that. Yes. I love it. Okay, so now you have your um, and you know. Some of this is confusing. I probably am confusing some of it too. And so um, be sure to get with the experts. And I just saw Harleen Pine came in and she um, put her information in on help. We have um, both Heather and Luke and Matt who can help with all of this because that's really at the end of the day, getting this, We I think we've established the case, right? We've established the fact that this is where people need to go. Now, how it works for each and one, each, whether you're a manufacturer, a contractor, whoever you are, architect, how it works for your company, whether you're going to outsource it, whether you're going to, um, I mean, I think the fact that Hunter is offering to work with people and send those drawings that they can then use with architects. Let's talk about that just for a second, because I really feel like that is the number one starting point. Um, Luke, why don't you just, how is it, as I know you said, go to the website and stuff like that, but yeah. if they have a question and they want to get it into submittal, they just start working with you. Right. And then that can go into their proposals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll treat that just like uh, a typical quote that they would get from us for, for the tapered insulation, but it would be, you know, the next step up. Right. That. Not totally like a quote, because we're yeah. not really interested in the price at that point. So, so it's all about the design and, and that's sort of the difference between what we call design assists and, and our regular quotes. So uh, we expect to sort of go back and forth with the customer a little bit with those design assists um, to incorporate all of that, sorry, information that they've got. So, yep. I love it. And so for people who are really out there going, okay, I'm ready for this next step. Maybe that's you, Stan Robinson, or maybe you already have it. But um, there is an Autodesk University that is coming up, I think, um, Matt, you said within the next three or four weeks. And that's where you just dive into the deep end of the pool. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So yeah, Autodesk University, that's uh, what, November 13th through the 15th coming up really really soon um but yeah there's i mean tons of courses uh for uh for design manufacturing you know media and entertainment professionals as well so you know, kind of run the gamut of of solutions and offerings uh i think it'd be best just to kind of throw the throw the link into the chat here and i'll, I'll bring that up in just a yeah. moment here but yeah, if you if you have the chance and your company is willing to send you to Las Vegas, that, because that's where it is, and that's always kind of a kind of a point of contention. And like, why are you going to Vegas? You're just going to drink and gamble. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I did a little button at the top of the screen that says "Convince your manager." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. That. Yep. And yes, Heather, I just, I just threw that in the chat. You, and Heather, you are going. I am right. So, talk. Have you? And is this in Luke? You're going to. You both are going. Uh, I'm. I'm not. Uh, yeah, Heather. Yeah, Heather brought it. Brought it to to me a while ago, and I was 100 percent on board. Um, you know, we've been using uh, Autodesk products, CAD, uh, what have you, for a long time, and and you know, introducing Revit to the to our department, really utilizing that, getting familiar with it, 
rolling it out. It's like it's a great resource, um, and it's going to have a lot of information that Heather's going to go absorb, bring back to the team. You know, so I'm um, really excited about that. Think of it like you know, think of it like an IRE um, on steroids or an right. I- IBEC on steroids, right? That's really what it is. It's a it's a show you get to go. Um, you get to meet, you know, the Autodesk vendors, uh, a multitude of different people, and then also have a ton of information yeah. in, in class. That's uh, <laughs> when they that's say available. a ton of classes, like over 600 in like three days. So, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. And so Luke, you know, there's people out here listening. So this really, I mean, I'm going to put this out there, probably not for the owners, unless you want to do that. What you need to do is empower um, whether you've hired some folks into your design teams, however you're doing that, send those employees to really be able to absorb and bring back all the information and understand it. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. You want you want the frontline people that are actually utilizing the software every day to be at this kind of event. You want the people that are going to be um, bringing this back to the company, training other individuals uh, up to to really progress and. You know, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, like stay on that that leading edge of the curve of, of the of technology and the industry. Um, that's what we've wanted to do here at Hunter Panels is we've wanted to innovate and be at the forefront of of you know of things that are happening in the world, and we want to make sure that you know we're providing that service. Um, we're there first. We're providing that service and uh, to the contractors, to the architects, and to the to the ultimately to the construction industry. Yeah. I also want to just give a little shout out to Autodesk in general, who really partnered with us in the beginning of this. Um, And there was a lot of wonderful, you know, exchange of information and they they really stayed in the loop with us as we were learning this. So um, I would definitely put them forward as a great resource for anyone looking to get into it. Yeah, 100%. That is excellent. And I do want to um, make sure on that one point that you just had, Luke, you are, Hunter is the only one who's doing this right now in the I mean, industry. As far, far as, as we, we know. know, we have not seen anybody else, uh, you know, provide this kind of information and these kind of plans um, out there. Um, you know, we work with hundreds and hundreds of contractors, um, subcontractors, hundreds of architects, um, other consultants. And, and we have, this is, we haven't seen this from anybody else. Yeah. yeah. As far as BIM goes, though, we do have people in our um, our partner companies, such yep. as Brian Rivera there um, at at Carlisle Construction Materials, and they are doing a lot with BIM in in their product line. So, something to stay tuned for for sure. That's great. Well, congratulations. Um, this has been amazing. I've learned so much. And I think we're just at the very beginnings and the tip of the iceberg. So there's a lot more to come on this topic um, as we go forward. And we know where the experts are. So thank you both. And thank you, Hunter, so much for sponsoring this. Um, thank you all, Matt, Heather, Luke. Um, thank you again for being here today. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, our project. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you. And thank you all for listening again. Thank you, Hunter Panels, for um, sponsoring this. If you have questions, be sure to get, you know where to reach us, Heidi at Rivers Coffee Shop. You can get with the folks at Hunter. We can get you to Matt. Um, There is a lot of good questions that we can um, help you answer afterwards for follow-up, so don't hesitate at all. And please join us in a couple weeks, November 9th. We are going to be having our next Coffee Conversations, and it's going to be on our Trends Report. We are so excited. So we have some amazing um, data and analytics that have come out of our trends report that we'll be sharing out. And that is sponsored by Beacon. So thank you, Beacon, so much um, for helping us really listen to the voice of the industry. Um, I want to thank everybody again for listening. This will be available on demand within 24 hours. And um, be sure to stay with us and check out all of our coffee conversations on both our website and our podcasts. So we will be seeing all of you. Thank you again, Luke, Heather, and Matt. And we will be seeing all of you in a couple weeks for our next Coffee Conversations. Have a great day. Thank you.